Thanks everyone for tuning in. For VPK by Maharshi Ayurveda, this is the Supercharge Your Spring Routine webinar. I'm Valerie Brown. Now, as we enter into spring, Ayurveda tells us that we enter into kapha season. So what does this change of season look like? And what can we do to assist our bodies through this change from our routine to our diet and even what kind of supplements should we be taking? So joining us today is Dr. Keith Wallace. If you've tuned in for many of our webinars, you've probably seen him before and we're always grateful to have him with us. Dr. Wallace is a professor at Maharishi University of Management, where he's also a chairman in the Department of Physiology and Health where many of their programs are focused around Ayurveda, including their online programs. So welcome back, Dr. Wallace. We're so grateful to have you here. Hi, nice to be here. <laughs> All right, so with the season change, we've been talking about this a lot recently in many of our blog articles. We know that things are shifting. And yes, we, we're after some knowledge. What, what can you share for us today? Well, I mean, it's one of the great things in Ayurveda is the recognition of biological rhythms, daily routines, seasonal routines, even life routines. And this is something which modern science is really catching up to Ayurveda on. Uh, last year, uh, the Nobel Prize was given for an understanding of the biological mechanisms in our clock which, uh, you know, this is more, this was looking more at uh, very simple animals and looking at all the genes and the molecular mechanisms. But there's been a huge amount of research uh, on how our whole brain keeps tracks of uh, rhythms, daily circadian rhythms and even seasonal rhythms. And so this is a big interest in the modern world today. But, you know, again, Ayurveda knew this thousands of years ago. They were way ahead of everyone. It's like, you know, it's interesting. The last three Nobel Prizes have all been on something which Ayurveda knew a long time ago. Uh, last year was the one on uh, the biological rhythms. The one before that was on something called autophagy, which has to do with um, how the body detoxes how the body has a natural system of destroying cells that are damaged. And the Nobel Prize before that was on herbal preparations. And it was looking at Chinese traditional medicine, but how they could be used for malaria. So this is kind of a very fascinating area right now. And from the Ayurvedic standpoint, this is the time when you have two really important things happening. And one is the buildup of kapha, and one is the buildup of ama. Now, kapha is interesting. Each season in Ayurveda has a particular dosha associated with it. So we think of winter. Some people say vada. Some people say vada and kapha. They say fall and winter. If you want to make it really simple and break it down to three seasons, you can say fall and winter are kind of a vata and kapha time. Spring, which we're in now, this is the real kapha time. This mm -hmm. is the ultimate, because it's partly because kapha can be wet and cold, and these are the qualities that we have in the spring. I mean, especially if you're living in Iowa, where I am right now, we just had a snowstorm. So, I mean, you know, it's ridiculous, you know. You barely see these little plants kind of coming up out of the snow. It's in insane. So, it's a time of where you have to worry about kapha building up. Kapha has already been built up from the winter, and now you've got spring, which is kapha season. And summer, of course, is nice and hot, so it's naturally a pitta season. But Ayurveda puts a big emphasis on what to do in the changing of the seasons. And this is something, again, which we're just beginning to understand from a scientific viewpoint. Ayurveda knew this long ago. And one of the things that's happening is because this kapha is building up, and also because ama, which we know is kind of undigested food, waste, toxins, these are building up in the winter. Winter is a time when we tend to have heavier foods. And these heavier foods kind of counteract the cold around us and so forth. And so the, the 
spring is a time when we've got these things built up and both kapha and amma building up is a little dangerous. It makes us more susceptible to allergies, to colds, to all kinds of things that people happen in the spring. And kapha has, you know, these qualities of being sort of heavy, cold, maybe a lethargic. And so you have to counter it in some way. So what's the opposite of ama and kapha? Well, it's agni. Agni is that fire of digestion, which tends to burn ama and which can help reduce kapha. And if our agni, if our digestive fire is off, then we get all kinds of problems. And that's kind of the basis of Ayurveda is to make sure that this digestive fire is very strong. So spring, like you were saying, supercharge. Well, what do you want to supercharge? You want to supercharge Agni. You want to reboot Agni. You want to get that Agni in the digestive system, in the cells to be at a very powerful level. And when it's at a very powerful level, then the ama gets dissolved. Ama is natural because every time we're, you know, digesting food, some is getting digested, some isn't. But it's when the ama begins to accumulate too much. And we've talked about in previous webinars how modern science is really understanding what ama is. Mm -hmm. Ama, you know, from Ayurveda standpoint, has one definition, but how do you define it from modern science? Well, we have this whole understanding now of leaky gut. We have this whole understanding of how certain things can trigger a disrupted microbiome. That's all these gut bacteria that are living on the lining of the gut. Um, certain foods, overeating, all these kinds of things can cause a disruption in the gut lining. And the gut cells are held together by what are called tight junctions, which are these proteins which wrap around cells and bind them together. But if the microbiome becomes disrupted if we eat certain foods, they can cause this opening to become too open. A little is okay because you want water and small molecules to get in. But when it gets too big, then you get undigested foods, uh, you get uh, bacteria particles, what are called lipopolysaccharides. And these things, when they get into the bloodstream, the body doesn't like it. These are foreign, non-self, the body says, attack. And the immune system gets all revved up and it starts to just blast at them. But the problem is a revved up immune system can start to cause a disruption in the body and that can be the basis of autoimmune diseases like diabetes mm -hmm. one, um, multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. So people are very concerned these days about a gut where there's this increased permeability or leaky gut. So you don't want this ama, this undigested food to get in the system. And if it starts to accumulate, it itself can cause a disruption in the gut, disrupting the gut bacteria, disrupting the lining. And so this becomes the beginning of disease, the first imbalance. And it's really important to understand that Ayurveda identifies ama as the basis of all disease. This undigested food, it gets in, it blocks up these fine channels in the body, shrotos. It causes all kinds of problems, inflammation, the whole immune system gets upset. So spring, obviously when you've got ama being built up from winter, you've got kapha being built up from winter, the obvious, and ama and kapha have certain qualities that are somewhat similar. They can be sticky, they can be um, heavy. So you want to do everything you can. And that's why this is the time for detox. And what does it mean, detox? You know, that's like, it's sort of an ambiguous word. There are a million detox programs out there. But Ayurveda has had, you know, many different programs that are detox. And Detox is kind of a couple of things. On, on one level, it's sort of getting rid of the am in the body, but ultimately the best detox program is a program that actually causes the Agni to be so strong that it burns up the ama, burns up the toxins. So you really, the spr spring is really a time when you cut down on the heavy foods. And I, you know, my suggestion at this time is always to 
um, go on a particular diet, I call it the rest and repair diet, which gives the, the body a chance to, particularly the digestive system and the microbiome, a chance to rest and then reboot. Yeah. And the body is fantastic at repairing things. So if the gut lining is inflamed, if there's leakiness there, if the microbiome is upset, if there's too much alma, then the best thing is let the body do it itself. But you kind of got, it's like a computer that goes nuts after a while. You got to reboot it and magically everything works again. Mm -hmm. And that's the same basically with the gut, if you can reboot it. And so the Ayurveda for years has had this very simple thing at the changing of the season to cut back on heavy foods, kapha type foods, kapha reducing diet, which means less dairy, you know, even though dairy is very important in Ayurveda, now cut back. Cut back on the heavy grains like wheat and so forth. Some people are gluten sensitive, cut back. Other people, um, sugar can be, you know, a real problem for the body, almost like a toxin to the body at certain times, especially when there's ama, so cut back. And then in this time of cutting back, do some simple detox, like sipping hot water, uh, one of the Moppy products, which is really good, is the Digest and Detox Tea, mm -hmm. which has a very good effect on uh, really helping the body. And of course, one of the most important products is Digestone or Tripla. This has always been thought of as something important for elimination. If you're going to get rid of toxins, hey, you've got to have regular elimination. That's critical. Mm -hmm. And Tripla has many other attributes. I recently saw an article where it actually increases the good bacteria and cuts back on the bad bacteria. So it has a direct effect on the microbiome, which is great because the microbiome is controlling our Agni and Ama. It's, it's hugely important. Mm -hmm. It really allows us to understand these terms in Ayurveda, which are kind of complicated, Agni and Ama. But what we know is the microbiome, this gut bacteria, has a huge effect on the digestive enzymes. It has a huge effect on our hunger levels. It has a huge, it goes right to the brain, sends chemicals in the bloodstream that go up to the brain. And it affects all aspects of the gut itself. So this is critical to get this, get those healthy bacteria pumped up, get the bad bacteria brought down. And that's great. Digestone does that besides improving elimination, besides reducing alma, besides all these great effects that it has. So those are two wonderful products that are very, very helpful. Very nice. Now this is maybe in, in deep contrast to what some of us consider detox. The Ayurvedic detox is very nurturing and it's not, it's not about you know, depriving the body necessarily like you're saying with your rest and repair diet, which we can put a link to on your website, the information for that. But you know, that's all about adding in great foods for your body. It is, and it really, uh, you, you have to think of a detox as having a beginning and an end. It's not like a diet for the rest of your life. It's just like a moment in the spring when all these things have accumulated, which Ayurveda is so smart that it recognizes it, and now you just got to simplify during mm. this period. And you can have great foods, but they just have to be foods which um, reduce kapha. And it's interesting because, you know, kapha often has these qualities of, you know, sweet, sour, salty. I mean, they can increase kapha. So you need to go for the other tastes, you know, the bitter, astringent, pungent and they're the things which will they're great taste great in food terrific but now's the time they'll help this kind of rebalancing mm -hmm. uh, and the ama also is something that you know spring is that invigorating time everything's coming up so you got to exercise more too but having diets that are um like you say, the detox can be really a, an enjoyable diet. I mean, one of the amazing foods that Ayurveda has, which is a very simple food, is kitchari. Mm -hmm. And kitchari, you know, is basically rice and dal. But um, having that can be very good detox. That can be a very excellent um, rest and repair 
component which can allow the body to really um, repair itself. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a short time. I mean, even a, like a Vata person who's thin, you don't really want to lose weight on this diet. So that might only be done for a week. You know, just a very simple detox. Just having this tea for a week mm -hmm. would be great. Sipping hot water for a week, making sure you take digest home every night. Um, these things are all uh, important, simple things. Ayurveda has m far more elaborate procedures. Um, there are many op mapi products, you know, that are uh, alim talks and these different kinds of products that are helpful for detox. And of course, then there's panchakarma, mm -hmm. which is a very uh, rich procedure and much, you know, much more um, time consuming. But, you know, you get wonderful massages, you feel like a king, and then you have enemas, which aren't you don't necessarily <laughs> feel like a king, king doing those, but afterwards you feel like a king. <laughs> afterwards, afterwards, or a queen, and um, so. But they're amazingly great, you know, procedures for improving the body. So it's just a wisdom of knowing at the right time what kind of foods to take, how to take them, and as I say, science is just catching up. Mm -hmm understanding this. I mean, Ayurveda's got so many good recommendations, just not only what you eat, but how you eat. Mm -hmm. Eat meal at you know, noon, sitting always, not drinking cold water, uh, you know, sipping hot water. I mean, just really ridiculously simple things that can have a huge effect on digestion. And especially right now, when people tend to get allergies, they tend to get colds, because it's a changing of the season, the body is adjusting. And we know from a scientific angle that the body is sensitive to season, the mm -hmm. microbiome is sensitive. Our super chiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus is sensitive. There's all these little mechanisms in the body that are sensitive and they keep track of daily routines and even seasonal routines. Mm -hmm. So, um, this, you know, modern medicine is, they know like, oh, you can't give them, you know, if you give a medicine this time of the day, it may not be as good as giving it this time of the day. So people are catching on to that, but nobody has really laid out this beautiful program of spring detox, rejuvenation, you know, rest and reboot the whole system. That's just modern science doesn't even have, most doctors aren't even trained in nutrition. It's utterly <laughs> ridiculous. And certainly the idea of six tastes and the idea of these herbal preparations is new to them. They just don't know it. So this is where Ayurveda can make a big impact mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. our whole preventative health system, really. Right. And the idea of using nature's intelligence of Ayurveda to then keep ourselves balanced. Yeah. I mean, we are part of nature. You, you know, it's like sometimes we think we're separate from nature. But, and we live in a world where lights are on late at night, where we have, you know, we eat foods out of season because that's, it's easy. You go to the supermarket and you can get a tropical fruit in the middle of winter, you know, but it, it's interesting that we are able to do many things that contradict nature. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know, they know people that are on shift workers have all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. Those, when you upset the biological rhythms, you cause problems in the physiology and in health. So people are aware of that and they understand that, as you said, we need to be in sync with nature. Mm -hmm. And spring is a great time to be able to get out, take a long walk, exercise more, um, do your yoga asanas, uh, do your meditation, you know, I do transcendental meditation. Everybody has their own um, area. And I think um, it's really, really important to take advantage of those key pieces of advice that will get the system working so that you don't, spring doesn't become a time when you suddenly get a flu or some other problem that can just knock you out mm -hmm. because you're vulnerable mm -hmm. during this changing of the season and you didn't know that hey, if I did a little detox, if I did a little rest and repair, the whole season will be much better for me. Just a slight bit of preparation. Now, now would you share with us an example of what 
a day's worth of, of meals would be on the rest and repair diet. And, and maybe everybody would be different or what are your, what are your uh, recommendations? Well, the rest and repair diet that I do is pretty much, it's interesting. It's very much a spring detox Ayurvedic diet. Mm -hmm. And it would simply like, typically they like you to have some stewed fruit in the morning, like say an apple with cloves and even cinnamon. And, um, you can have, you know, if you need to have more, you can have nuts and raisins. They tend to reduce like oily things a little bit at that time. So you have it, uh, not so much. Um, you know, if you wanted, you could have some sorts of porridge that um, if you can avoid gluten, that's better. Um, but, you know, you can have all kinds of fun little treats if you want to, too, you know coconut puddings or all kinds of things. Again, trying to cut back on dairy though. This is the time when you're cutting back on dairy um, and you're cutting back on gluten, which, you know, can not sound terrific to somebody that likes a croissant or, a, you know, likes to have their, their hot milk or whatever. So, um, and then in, in this diet, it, it is um, a rest and repair. So essentially what you're saying is have a lot of cooked vegetables. And the leafy green vegetables are the best, not so much root vegetables, but you can have some. Um, and then if you can do this kitchery, that's really the best. Mm -hmm. and that is a bit simple. And even if you do it for a week, if you do it for two weeks, that's great. Three weeks is terrific. Now the diet is a little Spartan in the sense it eliminates things. And the reason it eliminates things like sugar, gluten, and um, dairy, is because at the end of it, you want to reintroduce them and you want to have a period where your body hasn't had them. And now you're on kind of what I call a self-discovery diet because everybody is different. So what you do have to do now is you reintroduce things and you have like a food journal that you're keeping track of all the time, have it by your bedside. You're really, you know, watching over it. And then you see, okay, I just had some oatmeal for breakfast this morning. How did that affect me? I had, you know, a croissant. How did that affect me? I had um, an ice cream cone. What did that do to me? And that way you discover for yourself what's good for you. Now, Ayurveda, by knowing your, your type that you are, you know, whether you're a vata, pitta, pitta, kapha, or whatever, through a simple quiz on your site or on my site, these quizzes give, if you can see a vija and have your pulse taken, that's the best. Then you can tailor your diet a little more to these type of vegetables, these type of grains, and so forth. But everybody is so different. I mean, it's wild. I was just talking to somebody that said, well, I do your diet, but I can't have rice and I can't have dal. What? <laughs> what did you do? I have wheat. I do wheat. I, I'm a vegetarian, so I can't do any, you know, meat. And so suddenly, you know, he wrote, this guy had a really special diet and it, it, you know, would a rest and repair diet help him? Yes, but not if he's allergic to rice at all, then the kitchery is not going to be helpful. So you've got to be careful each person. And as I said, if somebody's a Vata person and too thin, uh, my wife lost 50 pounds on this diet. She yeah. extended it over a year and lost, you know, 50 pounds. I mean, she went into her own self-discovery diet, finding what was good for her and what was bad. So she was, she did the rest and repair, and then she went into kind of the self-discovery and figured out what was really good for her and what wasn't. But she needed to lose weight, and she lost it, and is, you know, much healthier as a result of it. Now she's right about the weight she should be. So it can be very good like that. It can be a very good way of shedding excess kapha and really, you know, reducing mucus, reduc reducing all those things that could be um, aggravating for you. But so each person is different. So there's kind of, you have to start one by just doing the number one step. And that is some form of detox, which, you know, can be simple as sipping hot water, taking the um, digest detox tea, tripla, then some way of giving the gut a chance to rest so it can repair itself. And you know, people have cravings, 
during these times. I mean, it's not, you want your chocolate, you want all kinds of things. And you know, nowadays you read dark chocolate's good, coffee's good, a little wine is good. So you're kind of like, hey, I can have everything. But if you want to just, you want what you want to do is just for a moment, try to kind of suspend those things. And if you have cravings, um, there are some good moppy herbs, Brahmi, ashwagandha. These are very good. Uh, Dr. Kulreet Chowdhury has done a really some wonderful tapes for you guys uh, talking about how you can get addicted to certain things and how these herbs can be very helpful for breaking those addictions. So um, there are some benefits there. There are ways that you can deal with it. And, you know, you got to just... Sometimes you just have to take things out of your home, not have so many, so much chocolate and sweets in there, and then have some other snacks that can, you can get you by, you know, some dates and, you know, raisins, a few things that'll get you through that period. And then um, know that it's just a small period of time. It's not like forever, just once. And then you start to bring foods back in and then you see how they affect you. And so you've done your, spring detox and you've done your time where the body is getting a rest and repair and then now you're reintroducing foods and you're seeing okay wow these bitter greens are really great for me i love them they're making me feel wonderful especially in the spring i can have gluten or i can't have gluten i can have i can have this much dairy but i've gotten older so Maybe I can't have the whipped cream and the ice cream and the, you know, mocha, whatever, you know, so I have to kind of cut back a little bit. Too much dairy throws me off. And so you, you identify, and that means, you know, your, your body has rested, repaired itself. You've gotten rid of the leaky gut. Now you're really at a chance to evaluate probiotics. They could be very good. You got to try them and see. And everybody advertises everything. They say, this will cure this, that'll cure that. And you don't know. Mm. So the only way is you really have to be your own measure of it. And thank goodness for Ayurveda, a time-tested knowledge that can help guide us with the basics. And then we can refine it from our own experience. Once we've repaired some of the damage that might be there, once we've gotten rid of some of these the ama that might have accumulated. Ama people ask, well, how do you know if you've got ama? Well, they're just simple things like after a meal, are you tired? Do you have to kind of, are you wiped out after a meal? Do you, uh, is your tongue coated white in the morning when you wake up? Do you get brain fog? You know, just where you can't remember anything is difficult. So they're just, there are sim you have a great quiz on your site. Mm -hmm. on the Moppy site, which is, uh, you know, people can look it up, the AMA question. You know, we, we can link it in the, in the uh, caption as well. The, the how, how do you know if you have AMA quiz? Yeah. yeah. And that's a good one because that, that gives you a feeling. And, and from Ayurvedic standpoint, AMA and Agni are such critical things. And they tie into the microbiome, having a healthy microbiome. And I was so happy to see this research on Tripola where it showed, you know, here's this great product, you're probably one of your very best products, and that it, now the scientists can say, hey, it not only has all these other effects, but it improves the microbiome, which mm -hmm. I, since I'm a devotee of the microbiome, I love it. You know? <laughs> now, what about, you, you spoke a bit about kapha imbalances that we can see I would love to, and I'm sure those listening out there as well, what about spring allergies? What is going on there? I, you know, I for years have taken um, allergy offense, which is a moppy product. And you're supposed to take it before. It has uh, all kinds of interesting things in it, a long list of herbs, um, many of them just, you know, classic herbs. Uh, in Ayurveda, and it, uh, like turmeric, you know, and all kinds of, some of the fruits that are in Tripla and stuff like that, and um, it is a great one, but you're supposed to take it before, so you're supposed to take it like, you know, it's a kind of a kapha ama reducing herb preparation, mm -hmm. and for me that, I live in Iowa, which is, you know, 
massive allergy. If you, you know, what would a doctor say to me? Move. That's <laughs> the first thing you should do, move, you know, because you live in the, the, the Hollywood of allergies, you know, it's just like, it's crazy here. Yeah, I used to live down in Austin too. And that's, there are people that I know that moved to Iowa. <laughs> yeah. They moved from Austin because it was the same thing. It's just, there's so much in the air out there. I know, I know. I mean, if you live in someplace like San Diego or something, that's, you know, the whole pollen count goes way down. So that, an Ayurveda would say, you know, one of the first things I say is remove the cause of disease. So, but if you can't move Ayurveda, really the biggest thing is reducing AMA. Mm. Uh, I, you know, I've seen Ayurveda, top Ayurveda experts, you know, they're sneezing and I, oh, do you have a cold? No, no, don't have a cold. I have excess kapha. <laughs> That's the way they look at it. You know, they look at the kapha is built up too much in the system and it needs to get out. It's all that mucus, you know, and we've known even in the West, okay, you're getting colds and allergies stop having dairy products because mm -hmm. dairy is very important in ayurveda but it's it increases kapha so diet is very important some of the herbal preparations are important um, and the spring detox is huge because if you get the right spring detox then you can reduce the ama get rid of the kapha and the kapha comes way down and then you go into spring when all these, uh, you know, pollen is out there, pollen count, you're going in with a system where it's not going to get aggravated. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they have special treatments in Ayurveda like nausea where they clear out the mucus in the nose and so forth like that. Mm -hmm. But I think these basic, you know, spring detox and uh, ama and kapha reducing are the key. Mm -hmm. Now, kapha is... When you speak about the the good qualities of kapha, so you're saying, you know, if we if yeah. it comes out and we get really steady and strong, and that's strong immunity, then going right. into the season of high allergens, then right. You know, I mean, they always say kapha people have the best immune systems, mm -hmm. and actually, Ayurveda loves kapha people. <laughs> I love kapha people. <laughs> yeah, if you're a vata pitta person, you want some kapha. You say, come on, give me more kapha. <laughs> yeah. Because the kapha is this kind of nice, steady, good-natured, sweet, you know, the earth mothers, the nice dads. Those guys are kapha, and they have that wonderful softness and easygoing, and the pittas are always, you know, racing around fiery, and the vadas are buzzing around like hummingbirds, but the kapha is like, you know, like a nice little bear having their honey and having a great time. <laughs> so it's... It, Kapha is a good thing. It's a great thing. But when it gets excessive, it causes all these respiratory problems, joint problems, and so mm -hmm. forth. So, you know, each one of them, I mean, Vada is the one they say 80% of disease is Vada. So that's getting a Vada disorder is far worse in many ways. And Pitta is all your digestion. So, you know, getting acidity and all these kinds of problems from Pitta inflammation. So you don't think of cough as so much a problem, except for this mucus, this accumulation of heaviness. And that's why the spring detox is so important, just to kind of knock down, you know, the imbalance cough, because you like the kapha, that's mm -hmm. a good thing, but imbalanced cough you don't want. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds so simple. I feel like every time that you're on with us and the tips that you give, it's like, oh, that sounds so easy, let's do it. <laughs> It is. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, for me, I always have to kind of, I'm even more complicated. I need to understand it scientifically first, just because that's the way I was trained. So for me, understanding the microbiome, understanding all this stuff. Now, I, I, it's not as kind of mystical for me. For a lot of people, they don't care, you know, hey, Ayurveda says this, I do it. You know, it's perfect. But I, I need sort of an explanation. And then when I get that explanation, then it becomes simple for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is the beautiful thing about Ayurveda is that there really is those two sides to it. Yeah. That back each other up. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's got so many good things to it. And I think as we get more research done, the world will kind of wake up to what a terrific and wonderful thing. I mean, 
when I think of the last three Nobel Prizes, all on something that Ayurveda knew hundreds of years ago. That's pretty cool. That's Fantastic, nice. yeah. Well, any further insights or encouragement that you could share with us, Dr. Wallace? Um, let's see, what else? Well, I think you also have to realize that probably the biggest problems we have today are mental problems. Mm. So like depression, anxiety, uh, that's huge out there. I mean, it's crazy out there. You usually think of um, anxiety as being a vata disorder, but depression you think is a kapha disorder. Mm -hmm. And so once again, you're not only affecting your body, but you're affecting your mind. And that's important, you know, you, when you know that, that by taking these simple preventative measures, by taking a few simple herbal preparations, following a simple diet, making changes in your lifestyle, like getting better sleep at night, um, getting exercise, this is really important in the spring. You don't want the kapha to build up too high, you know, get in balance, because then people get lethargic, depressed, and that's, that kind of mental side is probably even more important than the physical. Mm. You're not functioning really in balance on the mental side. It just kind of paralyzes everything you do in life. And it's crazy right now how these things, maybe it's the news, um, just people are crazy in balance for anxiety and depression. So those are you know, we have to re recognize it's not just the body, it's our mind and mm -hmm. it's how we feel, you know, doing our, our meditation each day, you know, for me, transcendental meditation, um, but doing your exercise every day, doing your eating the right foods, that gives you a feeling of bliss, of happiness. And that's more important than anything. Mm -hmm. That is like the basis, because your mind, influences your digestive system. If you're stressed, it just blocks everything. It upsets the agni, it upsets the ama. It's just not good. You know, you can look and see what the brain does to the microbiome. It makes a mess of the bacteria. So it's a holistic approach. It's, it's you know, every aspect of our life. And you need motivation to do it. <laughs> because, you know, it's, you know, we're busy with so many things. So the more things you can check off that it's going to help me, that's better. But, you know, just take a few weeks, do the spring detox, get yourself in tr back on track, and boom, it could set you up for the whole year. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Wallace, for being with us today. We always love having you here. And thank you to everybody who tuned in as well. We hope that y'all will join us again for future webinars. Thank you, Val. Mm -hmm.